Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Welcome to a new mini series to celebrate Vlogmas. Yes, that's a thing. Hot off the success of Vlogtober, where you followed my knitting escapades uh, with a weekly vlog, I'm going to do something similar throughout December for Vlogmas. Um, again, will be a weekly series rather than a daily update because I don't think it's going to be interesting enough to do daily and I haven't really got the time to do it on a daily basis. But I'm dressed up in my uh, festive gear. I've got my little Christmas jumper on. Da -da -da -da. I've got my little hat on. I've got my festive friend who is here to keep me company. And that's right, throughout December, I'm going to be doing Vlogmas. And whilst the knitters amongst us got to celebrate Vlogtober, Vlogmas is all about the crocheters. And I'm going to be taking part this year in the Toft Christmas Advent again. So each day throughout December, starting on the 1st of December, obviously, I will get a small piece of a pattern from Toft that will be emailed each morning. And throughout the month, we will then create a festive themed mystery Toft creation. So I've got a few friends that are going to make some guest appearances shortly to show what I've done in previous years. And then I've got a little uh, unboxing to show you what we've got in store for this year. I don't know how long this jumper and this hat are going to stay on. It's very warm, but we'll crack on because I think it's obviously nice and festive. So, yeah, the Toft Advent, um, I think it's been running. This is going to be its fourth or fifth year. I've taken part in the last two years worth of events and have really enjoyed them. Um, each year previously, we've had two patterns to crochet along, one aimed at beginners and one more intermediate to advanced. And you can knit one on its, uh, crochet one on its own um, and then do the other one as a follow-up. You can just do the one, you can try and do the two at the same time, which is what I tend to do. Um, and in 2018, we were introduced to Rory the Red Cardinal and Noel, the chipmunk, I added the Santa hat. It didn't come in the top kit. And Noel, the chipmunk. So these two lovely little creatures joined the menagerie. And if you are completely new to crochet, this is the amigurumi style, where you make these lovely little animals and creations. And they, they, they follow a theme. You tend to work in around... Um, creating the body upwards, for example. This as a bird is actually created by crocheting the body. You decrease out for the neck, stick a bit of stuffing in while you've got the opening, and then you continue for the head. So actually this is just one piece. Um, but this amigurumi style is really popular and you will have seen, I'm sure, lots of different um, creations using that style. And this is what Toft are famous for. I am a huge fan of Kerry Lord and the Toft Gang and their menagerie and the Ed's Menagerie series is actually the reason I learned to crochet. Um, I was gifted the book uh, Ed's Menagerie, the first one by my um, aunt uh, many years ago. I couldn't crochet um, but was gifted the book because I knit, you know, it's another craft and I took some lessons because I tried to teach myself on YouTube very unsuccessfully. So I took a lesson with the lovely Gail in Wales, who I've talked about in, in some other videos. I'll pop Gail's details below. And voila, I learned to crochet just to make the Ed's animals. So 2018, we were introduced to Noel and Rory. And I'll talk a little bit more about how the advent works in a moment. And then last year, we were introduced to... Uh, Eldon, who is a mountain goat, um, apparently is um, a symbol of Christmas in some Scandinavian countries. So we've got this lovely little old Billy Goat Gruff beard oh, and a lovely little bell so we can hear him come in. And then Estella. Now Estella is, um, I'm just looking to make sure I don't get it wrong. Estella is the clockwork nightingale 
from the Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale, The Nightingale. And this had me stumped throughout the entire month. She is glorious. We've got these lovely little plumes on her head with these shocks of purple. Amethyst, I think. Uh, we've got these lovely jewels that sit on the wings. We've got these jewels that sit around her body. And look at this tail. It's just bonkers. So last year's Menagerie um, creations moved us away from real world. And I say real world, obviously, toffed real world with a chipmunk and a red cardinal. And moved us into a more mythical um, goat and nightingale. Um, last year was brilliant as well because the actual box was themed with lots of cogs. No one really knew what that was, but of course, for the clockmaker, the cogs then made perfect sense when the lovely Estella was revealed. I just love that tale. So this year, the only thing I know is there's only one uh, creation that we're going to be working on this year. It's not like last year where we make uh, an easy one and a difficult one. Uh, this year, we're just making one and we're making a doll. That's all I know. Um, and then this might make a bit of sense then. You'll have seen, hopefully, in my last wrap-up video when I talked about making this little elfy friend um, was one of the reasons I, I wanted to do this. A, so that, of course, you know, everyone needs an elf at Christmas. Good elf sitting on my shoulder. Um, but also because I've never made one of the Ed's doll creations before. I'd only ever made Ed's animals. It's a slightly different construction technique. So I wanted to have a practice on a doll before the 1st of December arrived and I start the advent just so that I was a bit more familiar with how some of the dolls work. You absolutely don't need that. The pattern I know will be written for beginners and will have all the usual support that you get from um, from Kerry and the Toff team, but why not, hey? Um, so yes, so I hope you're going to follow along with my progress um, this year as we make Ed's Advent. Um, I said I'm not going to post daily videos. I think I'm going to do a weekly video. Um, 1st of December this year is a Tuesday, um, so I'll probably try and aim for a Saturday or Sunday video um, and each day as I start the advent and I'm working on that day's clue, I'll film a little bit of progress to show how the creation is developing or if there's something interesting for that day. I'll record a little bit of footage that I'll edit together and then either on a Saturday or a Sunday, um, I'll upload that footage to show the prior seven days or six days or however many days it's going to be. Um, usually the advent ends, or sorry, the advent does end on Christmas Eve, of course, for advent. And we usually then are sewing up on Christmas Eve. Um, I will put some spoiler alerts if there are any things in these videos that I think will give it away. If you're stumbling upon my channel and you don't want the big reveal, um, don't watch that video. Just Pause it and come back to it when you've um, caught yourself up and you've reached that point. But I'll try and record a final video on Christmas Eve then, time permitting, with all the usual festive madness, to share what the finished Ed's doll creation is going to be for this year. Um, so each day you get uh, an email first thing in the morning, usually between seven and eight o'clock that give you a small part of the pattern. So if I talk about Noel, for example, um, a leg typically is two days worth of clue. So you might get a clue that says start here with the usual uh, toft leg, which is to um, create a ring by uh, crocheting into into the uh, slip stitch. I think it's called a magic ring. You can tell I'm not a great crochet or, or an experienced crochet. I'm not really down with all the, the, the terminology. I think it's a magic ring. But you start here and then you would perhaps work 10 rounds. So you might stop there. 
and that's it for the day. So it's really manageable to do it in a bite size, um, you know, 15, 20 minutes each morning. And then the next clue will be to pick up where you left off and crochet the rest of the leg. So that might be day one, day two. Then you might actually find day three, day four, you've done two legs. Day five, then you may start the body. And again, it'll just tell you to start and it may tell you to get to sort of about here. And then the next day, we'll, we might finish it but we might get to about here. So each day absolutely is manageable in short steps. So if you want to do, which is what I was doing in previous years, if you want to do part one of the clue in the morning before work, and then we pick up the next creation and we do part two when we finish work. So with the wings, for example, this was a two clue piece I think where we started the wing tip and I think we got to about here and then we stopped and we did this bit so I try to fit it in around um, starting and finishing work so that I could try to keep on top I got behind with Noel because we then reached the fluffy tail loop stitch I got it after a while it clicked and actually I then caught up but I did get a little bit behind when I was doing the tail um, but the thing I like, which is what makes this Noel, for example, slightly more um, harder, slightly more harder, slightly harder than Rory is. Rory is a very simple toff creation. So it's just the body and the head. Then you create two wings. You make a tail, which is this branching technique where you kind of reach, reach this point. Then you stop and you just work on this bit. And then you pick the yarn back up here and you just make this bit. But it's a slightly larger tail, which is a little bit easier for beginners. So it's very simple creation. Whereas with Noel, for example, we had some more intricacy. So the simple shape, the head shape, a little bit of colour change in, which is probably an intermediate skill. But simple arms, legs, body. But then we have the loop stitch which is a bit more um, advanced. We have loop stitch changing colour. Um, this, uh, to make the stripe on the chipmunk, this was actually crocheted flat, which was um, a technique that you don't often see in Ed's Menagerie. Um, usually everything is done in the round or is made as small pieces and sewn on. So this was um, crocheted flat um, and then sewn on later. So that was uh, another two day clue, I think. Um, his little facial features. I still had no idea at this point that this was going to be a chipmunk because we made these black marks. Uh, I think we made one one day and one another day. Um, but until I started to sew him up, I still had no idea that it was going to be a chipmunk, even when I did this. The surprise worked on me, Kerry, if you're watching. Um, so yeah, so there's some more advanced techniques on some of the animals. And of course, if you take the same principle as last year, Eldon would have been very straightforward in as much as creating the body, the head, the arms and legs. Very simple toff tail um, and these lovely golden horns. Um, whereas Estella, she's a fancy lady. Uh, lots of small crochet creating these little diamonds. Um, we had the legs. I, I think this is really difficult. I managed it last year where you put the fourth toe on. So you have to pick up stitches here and then, oh, I hated that. It took me like five or six times to do it. This really elongated fancy tail, which is much more complicated than Rory's tail, although the techniques are very similar. So you get the idea. So this year, we're just doing one creation and it's going to be a doll. And that's all I can tell you. So I don't know how we're going to tackle it in terms of... Um, ease because of course we have easy and hard um it's an in it, it, i'm guessing it's going to be an intermediate pattern i wouldn't have thought it's going to be just for beginners but as i said earlier there's so much support from Kerry and the team there will be youtube videos that show different techniques there will be instagram lives there will be um so much support uh, for people to get into the um into the creations so i'm very much looking forward to add in to my Christmas family. So, just before I go, I'm not going to do a proper unboxing um, because I will keep that for day one, but 
My box has arrived, lovely in the Toft Brandon box. And within the box, so if I hold it up. So as usual within the box, um, I've got some uh, freebie patterns. That's a lovely hat. Uh, little mini crochet stocking. I'm probably going to have a go at one of those. Um, so you get some some free little patterns, um, and then underneath, excuse the rustling, underneath the tissue paper. Then I have my Toft Ed's Advent 2020 tote bag. So this has got the stuff in. So put that down. So this has got the stuff in. It's quite a lot of stuff in. So I'm guessing it's going to be a a fairly big doll. I think they did, si did say in the pre-sign-up how big the doll was, but I can't remember that now, and I'm not going to faff because I'll tell you again. But there's my stuff in, and then, and this is why I'm not, I'm not opening this yet, because it's so beautifully wrapped. So we have the uh, stickers for 2020, um, and yeah, it's just gloriously wrapped. I wish I could wrap Christmas presents like this. I leave this to Mark. He's very good at stuff like this. But beautifully wrapped um, is the box. Nice hard box. I'm guessing this is going to be similar to last year where we had... I thought the box was going to fall. Uh, we have this box um, and it'll probably open upwards and all of the yarn will be contained in the bottom. Um, so I'm going to keep that as a surprise for video one, when we get to the 1st of December, we'll do a live unboxing together. Um, the reason I want to do that to keep it a surprise is because I'm a bit like a kid in a sweet shop at Christmas and I want to keep the surprise even longer because I know there are two mystery yarns this year that are exclusive for this year's Advent crochet along. Um, they're not usually yarns that are in the Toft collection, is my understanding from the little bits I've picked out on um, Instagram. Um, but I don't want to know what the colours are because I don't want to set my mind running to work out, oh, what might it be? Um, so I'm going to leave the surprise for as long as possible. So we'll find out together what colours we have. So all I know is it's a doll. And I've chosen the oatmeal skin colour, so my doll is the same as my elf. You are able to choose from five or six, maybe even more, um, different skin tones, depending on the type of doll um, that you want to make. So I've gone for oatmeal to match my festive elf. So that's the only thing I know is there's going to be some oatmeal yarn in here. The rest is a mystery. So there we go. So short video, introduction to Vlogmas. So I hope you've enjoyed and I hope you'll come and join me on my crochet along advent adventure. So for now, from me and Elf, happy crafting. <laughs>